All right, I think we'll get started just because I'm conscious of time. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, my name is Vicki. I'm an academic and career advisor here at the Faculty of Education at Queens. I'm joined by one of my colleagues, Ina Holterman, who is an instructor in the Technological Education Program, um, and she's amazing. She's also one of the instructors, so she is going to have <laughs> she's going to have um, all of the you know key info for you today. Um, but the plan today is really just to tell you a little bit about Queens generally talk about our Faculty of Education, some of the really neat pieces of the program, and we'll talk about the Technological Education Program, or what we call Tech Ed, more specifically. Um, we'll conclude the presentation by talking a little bit about the admission requirements um, and answering some questions. So if you have any um, burning questions, feel free to pop them in the chat throughout the presentation. Um, we will answer them at the end, but just in case we don't or you forget your question, feel free to pop it in the chat. All right, so we're gonna get started. All right, so before we begin, we always like to take an opportunity to recognize that Queen's University is situated on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee territory. And we are grateful to be able to live, learn, work, and play on these lands. And as future educators, I know you're applicants right now, but as future educators, we hope that you'll also begin to make space or continue to make space for this thought and include it within your future teaching practice. I'm now going to pass it over to Ina, who's going to talk about kind of the nuts and bolts of the present of the program. Miigwech, uh, uh, Vicki. Thank you very much. So welcome, everyone. And I'm super excited to be presenting to you tonight. I know we're a small group, small but mighty. That's what it's all about. Um, I just wanted to take a minute and uh, kind of go over some of the key pieces of the, of the uh, tech ed program. This is our on-campus full-time program that is based in Kingston, Ontario. Um, this program uh, runs over four successive semesters, so it begins in May 2023 and wraps up uh, in early August 2024, which means that you uh, can begin working in Ontario schools as soon as September 2024. Uh, so in technological education, I always like to ask the question, you know, of people who are interested in applying to the program, what is technological education to you? And uh, some people will say, oh, it's about, you know, hands-on learning, it's about skilled trades, uh, it's about co-op placements or dual credits, it's a way to train new skilled workers, it's an opportunity for kids to learn about their changing world and learn how to problem solve and work through uh, complex uh, societal and historical issues. Um, yeah, it's all of those things. And it is also um, a curriculum topic in the Ontario curriculum that focuses on 10 key areas of technological education. And within each of these 10 areas, you see uh, 10 on the list in front of you. Within each of these 10 areas, there are discrete, um, I guess I should call them competencies or specific skill sets. So when you apply to the Technological edu Education Program here at Queen's, you're going to be choosing uh, one of these 10 disciplines. And so when we do our Q&A closer to the end, if you aren't sure what your uh, skilled trade slash trade experience or work experience would qualify you to teach, I am really happy to kind of unpack that for you a little bit. You'll also notice that there are two domains here, hairstyling and aesthetics and transportation technology that have a little asterisk beside them. And that's because these particular trades are regulated trades in the province of Ontario, which means that anyone who is going to hold a C of Q, a certificate of qualification in this area, must, um, or sorry, everyone must hold a CFQ in order to practice. And so that is the same in, in teaching. If you are teaching hairstyling and aesthetics or transportation technology, you have to remain a member in good standing of Skill Trades Ontario to maintain your, your uh, qualification. 
So I just also want to mention uh, the, some of the content knowledge that uh, we look at in the uh, tech ed program, but not just in the tech ed program, but in the pre-service teacher education as a whole. So while I'm an instructor of technological education and the courses that I teach focus on pedagogy, hands-on learning, how to structure project-based learning and problem solving, transition opportunities for students embedded in the curriculum. You're also going to be fully integrated into the pre-service teacher education program along with all of the other students. So you will be uh, completing content-based learning in courses in addition to technological education in literacy, numeracy, math, science, applied subjects. Now, that's not to say you're going to be taking a math class in order to be a teacher of technological education, but in some of your courses, there will be in-depth discussions about, hey, Stephen, I'll use you as an example. You're, what's, um, what's your area of expertise? Uh, my area of expertise is construction. Okay, so I'm a licensed this... electrician, and I've been doing it 22 years. Oh wow! Congrats. <laughs> They'll be sorry to see you go, but we're going to be very happy to have you. Um, what I'll say is, as an electrician, but also as um, someone with a background in construction technology, a lot of the topics that you need to be very fluent in include literacy, like reading plans and looking at schematics, numeracy, especially if you're self-employed or you're working with work orders, mathematics, you're going to have to be able to determine, uh, you know, what the range and run might be or what, you know, how much uh, equipment and material is needed for a job, the science of it, you know, circuitry and right. I mean, that's way out of my scope of understanding. I can I can kind of deal with the grade nine, you know, tech science, but beyond that, I mean, there are a, there's quite a lot of applied science in technological education, and especially in as as a as a specialist in, in electricity, environmental ed. I know in construction, there's a lot of discussion about how to make homes more environmentally sound and how to work in a way that respects the environment. Um, the arts, well, of course, <laughs> you only have to have um, a, 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 an electrician or a, someone work on your home who doesn't have an appreciation for aesthetics to really understand why it's so important. Um, and, and also functional pieces of what you do in your everyday um, trade specific job. Financial literacy, again, that gets back to the business side of things. Often in technological education, we come with a range of experience, perhaps been business owners, perhaps, you know, did payroll, things like that. So financial literacy has, has been something that you've explored in your careers. And then finally, teaching the knowledge of and the ways of knowing First Nation Métis Inuit studies um, and Indigenous ways of knowing. These are things that, uh, all of these things are things that you're already quite well versed in. So what we hope to do is with the content knowledge aspect of your courses is to take what you are bringing to the table and give you the tools to teach that to students. We know you're already experts in your field. That is of no doubt. But how do you take all of that, those 20 years that Stephen was talking about, those, you know, contract negotiations, all the things that you have to do when you're when you're working in the construction field, how do you take all that and connect it to kids? and make learning happen. And so that's part of the content knowledge that you get in the pre-service teacher education program. Along with this content knowledge, there are certain pedagogical knowledge pieces and instructional strategies that really seem to be the thing that most uh, technological education teacher candidates wanna know the most about. They feel really great in their topic knowledge, you know, maybe had apprentices in your workplace, maybe you mentored some, some students through co-op placements, 
But where you need to kind of develop your skill set is how to translate that into meaningful learning experiences for kids. So again, some of the courses that you would be enrolled in will focus on integrating tech, uh, information technology and using it as a teaching tool in your classroom. You'll get a develop a deeper understanding of classroom management and organization, uh, theories of learning, pedagogical underpinnings around experiential learning, project-based learning, product-based learning, things that you already know so much about but how do we translate that into experiences for kids? As well, and we spend quite a lot of time with this at Queens. This is actually one of um, the cornerstones of our program is developing um, the Ontario context for you. So while we are an internationally recognized program of uh, pre-service teacher education, we really focus a great deal on the context of Ontario because, quite frankly, the majority of our students will be teaching in Ontario schools. So we try to work to help prepare you for the social, emotional, and um, developmental pieces of teaching in this province, teaching adolescents, understanding how to articulate the standards of practice, which really are the foundations of teaching in Ontario, and help you um, develop some tools and some competencies around being a mentor for students and being that teacher that you needed when you were in high school, that teacher that got you in the tech shop or in the computer lab who said, you know what, you want to be here all of lunch and work on this, I get you. That's, let's make it happen. And I think, you know, I can speak from my own personal experience that had it not been for, you know, Mr. White kind of opening his door for me, uh, you know, over lunch and at the end of the school day, I definitely would not have been successful in secondary school, not even close. If I didn't have that tech ed connection, um, I'm a little nervous about where I would be right now, to be honest. And uh, it really was a pathway to success for me. And it's what I'm very passionate about. And it's what I think that you can bring to students too, especially if you have a love for your, for your content area, your skill trade or your background. If you have a love for that, if it's just like become this part of who you are, this is what kids need to see. They need you. They need you as role models and they need you to, to open doors for them and create opportunities. So we're going to move into um, the application requirements. So that was my uh, bit of a coaching show there. We're going to come back to uh, answer specific questions about the program, but I'm going to turn the presentation back over to Vicki, who's going to talk about um, some of the application pieces, which I know we are right in the middle of right now. And I'm going to be monitoring chat, so you just pop your questions in there and I will uh, make sure they get answered. Perfect. Thank you so much, Ina. Um, so as Ina said, we're going to talk a little bit about the admission requirements the supplementary documents you're going to have to submit if you would like to apply. And we'll talk a little bit about um, Queens in general. Um, so you'll get a little bit of an idea of what it would be like to be a student here. So this is kind of the big question. So to qualify for the program, applicants must demonstrate one of the following. So you can see those three areas there. So their first would be minimum of five years of wage earning experience where skills and knowledge from the broad-based technology area were used. Okay, so that's the first one. You could also show, okay, so it's an or, you don't have to have all of them, at least two years of wage earning experience and successful completion of a post-secondary education in their selected broad-based technology area, a minimum of six semesters of post-secondary education, or a combination of wage earning experience and education that totals five years, of which at least two years were wage earning and at least four months were continuous. So you probably will know just by reading those which ones 
which one you kind of fit into, okay? So the important thing to remember is that we always kind of think of it's the rule of five. We're looking for a background of five years of academic or work experience or a combination in your broad-based technology area. Okay, the next slide is going to show some common combinations that we see here in the admissions office to give you an idea of what we may be looking for, okay? Okay. So this slide kind of shows you roughly the combinations that we're looking for that create that five-year background. Okay, I'm not going to read all of them. You probably know which, which one kind of uh, represents you. But for example, if you completed a three-year college diploma in your broad-based technology area, um, we would be looking for two or more years of wage earning experience. Okay, so that combination of five. Okay. And you can see, you might have a question about, oh, well, you know, um, I did this many hours. I because we know that sometimes in some of the tech positions or trades, my my partner works in the trades. I know he doesn't work standard hours. Sometimes works more than normal. Um, and so we count one year as equivalent to eighteen hundred and fifty hours. Okay. All right. So the next thing you have to think about is within your five years or more of that background. So however you get to those five years. In your application, you also have to demonstrate a proof of competency across multiple skill areas in your broad-based technology area. So what we mean by this is that in each BBT, it's going to encompass multiple skills, okay? So for example, let's continue on with kind of construction tech, because we've kind of started with that. There, um, in, in construction tech, you may see framing or cabinet making. Um, you may see, you know, air conditioning, HVAC, Okay, so these are multiple skills within that construction tech um, BBT. So on your application, you need to be able to demonstrate experience or knowledge in a minimum of two to four of these skills. Okay, um, if you're not exactly sure what your BBT area encompasses, that's why we're here. We're, um, Ina and I are happy to answer questions about that, but you can also find it on our tech ed web page. And I can link that um, once we get into the q and I'll pop a link in there of where you can find that. And then if you have questions, I'll also pop our email in. So you can always shoot us an email and we'd be happy to answer questions. Um, and you, how you'll demonstrate kind of this proof of competency is in your supplemental documents, which we're going to talk about next. Okay, so here is the list of supplemental documents. Don't be overwhelmed. You're probably going to have all of this. And if not, we can work with you to get some of these documents ready. Okay. So we have a form on our website. And it's it's actually nice because we're going to submit pretty much everything through that supplemental documents form. Okay. So you're going to need a resume, um, which you probably all will have, and copies of certifications or qualifications or certificates of apprenticeships. And if applicable, if you have that valid trade license, that's helpful. Um, and you're also going to need to submit the technological education application information sheet. That's a, a mouthful, um, but it's really just kind of the basics. Um, and letters of wage earning experience. Okay, so that's to show that that wage earning experience is proof. Um, any educational transcripts. So second, so anything from high school a diploma, a degree, we would need copies of all education. And your, um, oh, I think this is the same. So we have two of the same thing. Um, so that's just a, our fault on that area. But so all of those pieces will all be submitted on that supplementary documents form, okay? So it is possible, so if it is possible, you may have been self-employed, maybe you owned your own business. So then you're like, okay, well, how do I get this information to you? How do I prove that I owned my own business for five years or, or what have you? Um, and we do, you would need a, what we call a sworn statement. Um, we can't just take it off good graces that you owned your own business and you, you're competent in this area. We need a sworn statement okay, um, or a solemn affirmation before a commissioner of oaths, indicating the reasons why it's unavailable. Um, so if you own your own business, that's an example of why it's unavailable, and copies of T4 tax forms, so we can kind of compare those to see that you've had that income. 
or a statement from an accountant to confirm income and dates of employment. Okay, and I won't get into this too much because there are a few things that you need on this on this sworn statement, and we can provide all of that information for you exactly what you would need for that. Um, so we would just recommend that you reach out to us directly, and then we'll say this is exactly what you need, just so that there's no mistakes and you get you know you get exactly what you need from it. Okay. Okay. So um, your, in terms of your supplemental documents, that's kind of for the tech ed piece, okay? Um, so once you apply on OUAC, or what we call TEAS as well, that's the Teacher Education Application Services. Um, if you went um, to university, you may, have, you may be familiar with OUAC, the Ontario University's Application Center. They're all really mouthfuls, um, but that's where you're gonna apply. So if this is of interest to you, that's where you're going to apply for these programs. Okay, and once you submit your application, within, you know, a couple of business days, usually three to five, you're going to get an email from us that says, thank you so much for applying. Now, here's all the information you need to submit. Okay, so give it a couple of days. We're also going to upload, um, you're going to get access to a, your Queen's portal. It's your Solace Center, your Student Online University Center, and you're going to have a to-do list. So we're going to be able um, to track all of your documents. And as we receive those documents, we will update your to-do list. And so you'll know exactly what's still outstanding, okay? And the nice thing about it is this program, you'll, you'll, Ina does a lot of the admission pieces as well, but uh, my colleague Taylor Liggett is actually in charge of the tech ed um, application. So you're not gonna be working with multiple people. Here at Queens, you're gonna have that personal touch and you're going to be able to work with the same person, um, email the same person, and so Taylor will let you know if there's anything that you haven't submitted, okay? Um, in addition to your supplementary documents, so those, you know, all the, the list of documents that we listed, um, you're also going to have to submit a personal statement of experience or commonly known as a PSE, okay? It's a two question document. Um, it's quite broad, so it leaves you to kind of take it where you wanna take it. Um, and we say it, you know, you should really outline what you've learned from your experiences. It can be a specific, to your trade or to your, your area of tech ed um, and how you think that will help you as an educator, okay? So these PSCs are read and they are scored. So please take your time and um, you know do your best on them because they're, they are a big piece of the application, okay? It's all fine and nice to be an expert in your trade, but we need to know that you have, you know, it's there and you have the, the, the drive to wanna to be an educator as well, okay? Okay, so I think oh, that kind of goes, oh, um, okay. So as I said, this is the link for OUAC. So that's where you're going to apply. We also have a really good webpage that has some more info about applying. So if you have more questions, I encourage you to read through that webpage, that second link there. And um, below on the slide are some important key dates and deadlines. So, um, Applications are now open, as probably you all know now, um, and they're going to remain open until December 1st. Okay, so you can apply anytime between now and December 1st. So in the next month, all of those documents will be including the PSE, the personal statement will be due December 10th. That's not to say that you should leave them all until December 10th. Okay, so I know sometimes it takes a bit of time, to get these documents in order. So I would recommend that you start it sooner rather than later. Um, just because December 10th, from my understanding, I think it's a Saturday, don't quote me on that. But if it, I think it's a Saturday, which means that if you go to submit something on the Saturday, there's nobody in office on Saturday, okay? So please just be aware of those deadlines, okay? We start to send out our first round of offers February 15th. Okay, so it's a tight turnaround for us too because our program starts earlier, as Ina said, we start in May. So we have to get those offers out mid-February. Mid and then if you do receive an offer, you would need to accept your offer by March 1st. So it's a two week turnaround for you as well. Okay, and that's just because we have an, um, we have an earlier start date than other universities. Okay, so just something to keep in mind. All right, so here are just some helpful links. Um, there's the second bullet point there is that general email. So I would encourage you write it down. We will also post this, um, this webinar on our website. So you can always refer back to it if you have questions. 
but that's that general email where you can ask any sort of questions that you may have that may be specific to your um, case or application, okay? All right, so we are now going to move kind of into questions. Um, I like that we have a small group, um, so, you know, we can answer. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to exit out of this. I don't think we need it anymore. So we can focus on the questions. All right. I'll just take a look at the chat. Or why don't I moderate the questions? Because I've been kind of following them along. Perfect. Yep. And I'll sort of start at the top and we'll just kind of go down. And then if it's your question, please feel free to elaborate if you feel like maybe I'm not hitting the response that you're looking for. So, um, Sarah, thank you for your question. I know the primary junior intermediate pathway is 